and we are live right now jeff goodman uh you can see him in front of i don't even know what stadium that is um this is colorado state's football stadium robert and uh, the coach was fired here yesterday but i'm not here to cover the firing (laughs) of the old uh boston college football coach uh adagio is his last name he's gone uh i'm not gonna break the news i'm gonna leave that to pete thamel who's gonna break the next Colorado State football coaching news, but we are going to break down uh, the Maryland, um, the Maryland hoops job here, and uh, we actually got some football players coming in. Maybe I should oh, ask him. Ask, ask him who. Ask he him wants what they think about Maryland, uh, Maryland, and uh, and Mark Turgeon. I guess officially parting ways is the way that we need to phrase this, right? We can't say fire. We need to say Maryland and Mark Turgeon have parted ways. Uh, it's something that probably felt like it was kind of a long time coming at least for maryland fans um i know that that's that's kind of how they felt about uh about turgeon fair or not um given the situation and given the way that his uh career and tenure there has kind of gone but what do you know about the situation and uh, i guess first and foremost when did you first kind of hear about this is this something where there was rumblings or is this just completely out of the blue well i i had a flight this morning from boston to denver in uh, which, as I told you, it was a shit show because I left both of my laptops at Logan Airport. So if anybody's got any info on uh, where my laptops are, uh, let me know. Because finding somebody, uh, the process is not very, very well streamlined. Anyway, so I landed. We had no Wi-Fi. It's been a horrible morning, a horrible morning. Uh, landed, no Wi-Fi on the flight. So I landed to a um, voicemail. Uh, from, I guess, like an hour before from a Maryland person who had told me that uh, Turgeon was out. And at that point, I also got a text from somebody saying they had just uh, officially released it. But this was kind of in the works. I guess last night it started. And from what I'm told, according to multiple sources, it, it was a Mark Turgeon decision that he had just been worn down as much as anything. And, you know, felt like, At this point, it was probably the best decision for everybody, Uh, him, his family, Maryland. Obviously, they got off to a horrible start here, and it it was trending in the direction that he wouldn't last past the year. And and I think this is a job that really didn't fit Mark Turgeon well. He did well, you know, by most things. Well, he had him in the tournament almost every year. I think it was six of the last seven, if you include the they finished tied for first in the Big Ten two years ago. So, like, by most standards, that's that's a pretty solid job. But, you know, Maryland, it, it's a really good job. It's a top 20 job for me in the country. And the expectations are higher than that. They're to go to more than one Sweet 16, you know, in, in the last seven years when you're, you're getting the tournament. So uh, he's out. And, again, I'm told, according to my sources, mostly uh, his decision as far as now. Why now? Probably would have been the administration decision after the year, certainly if they had, or maybe even in a month, they might have said, you know what, they've quit on you, we'll make a move. But Turgeon kind of got ahead of it here as much as anything and said, I'm done. Yeah, and you know, at some point, it's just kind of a, a quality of life type thing right? that, yes. that I think that you're dealing with. This. And, and it, when, when you're in a situation where your fan base doesn't like you, um, right. you're not winning basketball games, you're, they they yeah. wanted you gone beforehand. It just becomes a toxic situation that uh, maybe is better just parting ways. Now, um, I will say, and I do believe that that he quit on his team. Like I think that that's something that is fair to say, right? Um, given that, yeah, I mean, are people are going to say that. People Stop. are going to people are going to say he quit on the team. And yeah, and know, I, I I have no problem with them saying that. It's not something where I think I would. Uh, disagree with that sentiment when you're when you're leaving in the middle of the year because it's not something where you're happy then you are quitting on your team um but and, and you at wonder, some point you kind of have to do what's, what's what's best for you as as, as an individual and for your quality of life man it's it, it wasn't it wasn't fun being mark charge in the last couple of seasons no i mean and, and and i think you wonder too how much if he had had a team he loved right now and i'm going to give you guys a tour of the colorado state campus while i'm doing this uh, cause I've never been here. So we're going to, we're going to get a tour together. But if Mark Turgeon loved his team, would he have done this? That's my question to you, because if he had confidence and he could turn it with this team and he liked his group, 
you know, would he have, would he have stuck it out and, and tried to continue and see what he could do with this group? I, I don't know. I mean, I haven't talked to him yet. I hope to talk to him later today and get some more info of exactly why he did this. But, you know, it didn't look like a very functional team as well, right? I mean, you brought in Fats Russell, who we've all talked about. Like, we didn't know if he could coexist and, you know, talented, but, you know, tough to coach and his decision making. And, you know, Ayala has been bad. Um, Dante Scott has. They've been bad. I mean, they've been bad. They can't make shots. And they just – I'm surprised because I saw overall, them in the preseason. But it's also just like a weird – I thought they'd a, be much a weird fit to, It's a weird fit putting this roster together the way that it is put together. It's just not um, – it's not, it's, not it's not a great fit. Like they have a shoot first point guard on a team that last year was most effective when they played kind of like those switchable lineups where everyone was like 6'4 to 6'7". And they just got really yeah. kind of got out and guard, guarded you and tried to out physical you. And now they're a team with a, a massive six foot, whatever center and a point guard that's shoot first and inefficient. It's just not, it's, it's weird how this roster has been put together. And I, I, I don't, I, I did not see this going well this season. And I kind of figured that this was probably going to end up being, I, you know, was the end I didn't the end. know because again, so many teams have brought in transfers. So you didn't know uh, whether, and, and then when I was there, you know, Yala and Fats knew each other, so I thought maybe their chemistry would be better. But, again, ultimately wasn't good. Turgeon's out. Danny Manning's in. And, uh, you know, I don't think Manning has much of a shot to get this job full time unless he absolutely crushes it. I mean, he'd have to get him, to me, you'd have to probably get him the second weekend of the NCAA tournament for Danny Manning to have a shot to keep this thing full time. And, Danny Manning's like the nicest human being in the world. So uh, I'm rooting for him to turn around and, and have a good year. But I think we'll they got to – again, Maryland's a top 20 job, Rob. You agree? Um, I don't have like a specific rankings, but it's a very, very good job in the college basketball world. Uh, with the amount of talent, the amount of backing, the passionate fan base, how good the home court advantage is, um, it, it's it's a very, very good job. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's the, they should the, be able to. Look, the The bottom line is this: like they probably should be better. And and it, here's here's the thing that that I think is important to note, right? Um, Mark Turgeon has been a guy that has been good for this program, right? I, I don't think that you can argue anything other than the fact that like Maryland was a good team over the course yeah. of the last however many years. You, you make six out of seven NCAA tournaments, you are a good basketball team. But there was there were precious few times where it felt like this was a team that was going to find a way to be able to make a Final Four. Like I don't think there's a single time during that stretch where, with the exception of the year when it was like they brought in Robert Carter at the five and Melo Trimble was there and Suleiman. I think Deswell, yeah, like Rashid Suleiman. Like they, that year they had a team that was probably a one where you went into the season like they can make a Final Four. They finished the season yeah. as, as a four seed. Um, I think that some people had them preseason number one. Uh, but for the most part, they've just kind of been like there. They've just been a team that has been referenced. There's been nothing exciting about it. There's been no reason to be uh, bullish on this program. It's just kind of like, yeah, Mark Turgeon is there. Mich- uh, Maryland's here. They're going to be a uh, 20 and 10, seven seed hanging in the NCAA tournament and get knocked out in the second round. Right. And if you are a top 20, If that's a top 20 job in America, if you are expected to be a top 20 program, there should be like, I don't even fault Maryland fans. Like there should be a certain level of expectation where it's kind of like, look, we tried this. He was fine, but we want something new because what we have going on right now is just not great. And that's fine. Again, I'm I'm okay with all that. I'm okay with, and again, I don't think Turge was the best fit for College Park. I think you know, Turge isn't a, a touchy-feely type guy. He just wants to coach ball. He just wants to – doesn't want to deal with a lot of media stuff. He's almost too honest to a fault. I told him that. You know, after press conferences or whatever, he'll say things that I'm like – like he's incapable of bullshit. And, and I love that. We love that as media people. But, you know, again, sometimes there's certain things you probably shouldn't say after games. Uh, but I think the pressure, the expectations – I think College Park just kind of honestly 
just kind of wore him out as much as anything. And he didn't want to fight anymore and deal with it all. And again, for his family, I think he decided this was probably the best thing to do. So now, now if you're Maryland, you know, you got to figure out where to go next. And to me, like I said, it's a top 20 job in America. It is because of the fan base, because of the, the, the fan base, the recruiting base are, are two things that to me, put it as a top 20 job. It's in a great league. Um, so I, I, I think you got to aim high here and you got to shoot. You got to shoot big if you can. And to me, I'll give you the two names that I would start with or, or among the names. Yeah, that and, I haven't and before, about before you, before yeah. you say this, let, let's just make something clear at this point. There is no like list, right? People no, are going to be like, who's the no, next guy? Who are they targeting? Like this, this yeah. shit just happened. No, no, it's no. all, no, this it's all is speculating. It's I all would. guesswork. So I'm going to I'm going to phrase it to you like this, Jeff. If you are Maryland's athletic director, who is the first call you're going to make? Who's the second call you're going to make? And then who's the after that? Who are the guys that you're going to kind of look at when, where it comes to the second tier? But let's start with the big names first. I would try Chris Holtman and Nate Oates and see if they're interested. Chris Holtman's buyout has gone down significantly. I don't know if you go within league, but. You know, I, I think it's worth a shot. He's a Midwest guy. I don't think he'd do it. But, again, you, you got to try. So I would go Chris Holtman and Nate Oates. And Nate Oates has is, is done an unbelievable job at Alabama. But you're playing second fiddle, and so is Chris Holtman for that matter. They're both playing second fiddle. It's all about football in both of their spots. Do they want to be at a basketball school where, ultimately, you're filling it up for every non-conference game? I've been to Ohio State non-conference games. I've been to an Alabama non-conference game. They don't fill up. They don't care. They care about football until football's over. And then they'll, if you're good enough, they'll care about basketball. So at, at Maryland, it's all about hoops. It's a hoops job. So if either one of those guys says to themselves, you know what, I'll take a shot with one of the best. It might, might look lateral in some ways. But it's not because, again, it's a basketball job at Maryland. Those two guys, yeah, maybe they'll make it, – it'll be lateral in terms of the, the money. Maybe Maryland won't be able to pay more than Greg Byrne can pay at Alabama or Gene Smith can pay at Ohio State to keep Holtman and, and Nate Oates. But I think you got to look at those two guys. I think they're two that – you know, Kevin Willard is another name that probably would make a lot of sense, and he's one that probably would take it in a heartbeat. If you're him, Seton Hall – done a great job lately but it's a tough tough job and it's probably time to bounce if you can so those are three names that come to mind right away yeah the the willard one i think is the obvious the the name is going to be the the most obvious connection to probably get the most uh what's the word i'm looking for the most attention the most and the juice. most backing yeah. and most people kind yeah. of like talking about it just seems like yep. he, like willard makes a lot of sense um for that spot given his background and given kind of what he's been as a coach. Um, but I will say this. I don't know if if you're trying to make like the home run splashy hire, I, like I don't think that that's Willard. And look, I love him. I think he is a fantastic coach, and I don't think anybody should kind of overestimate what he's done at a Seton Hall program that is in the middle. Of, he's recruited to Newark, Newark, New Jersey, right? right? We're not, don't realize it's not, it's yeah, very different than, than College yeah. Park. Yeah, yeah. It, it's very hard what he's done. But it's it's also like, you know, it's I don't know. I'm trying to I'm trying to tell him to not like completely completely kill him. But it, it's just if you're looking for the split, he here here would be my concern if you hire Willard. Are you just hiring another guy that is going to kind of do uh, what Mark Turgeon has done at Maryland, where you're going to win enough games to be good and relevant and in the tournament every year? But are you going to have a guy that is going to take you? to a place that you haven't been under the guy that you just fired. I'll give you another name that I'd have on my list is Ed Cooley. And I know he hasn't done great lately at Providence, but man, could he recruit. And that's the one thing with Turge. Turge wasn't a personality, didn't really want to go out. And, and he didn't mind, like, he didn't love recruiting. He did it, but he wasn't going to go out and talk to all the boosters and, you know, run in the stands and, you know, hang with the, the, you know, the students and all that. Cooley will do all that. He will do all of that. Like Maryland fans would love him. And then if he wins, 
you know, I listen, I've been a proponent of Cooley at Michigan. When Michigan, remember they hired Juwan Howard over him, and I, I thought it was a mistake at the time. I still mm-hmm. think Cooley is an elite, can be an elite recruiter at the right school. Providence is a tough, tough place. Kind of like Seton Hall in some regards. Um, so I, I'd have Cooley on my list. Uh, I'm trying to think who else I'd have that that makes sense. You know, if Sean Miller didn't have the, the stuff, he was – listen, Sean Miller basically turned it down last time. When Turgeon took it, Sean Miller met Arizona. Greg Berm was the AD then. And I remember he was concerned that Sean Miller was going to take the job. Um, he met with Maryland. Kevin Anderson was the AD at the time. And it honestly, it looked like – it might happen, and Sean decided to stay at Arizona. If all the stuff weren't hanging over Sean's head right now, with with the Arizona NCAA stuff, um, you know that would be an easy, that'd be a slam dunk. Well, what about his brother? Yeah, I don't know. If, again, I don't know if if you can hire somebody um, that got fired in the league a year ago. I, I don't know. I mean, again, I think ours gets a little tricky. Yeah, yeah, I I, I don't know. I don't know if the fit to, you know, not that Maryland's Indiana. It's not, they're not quite it, but they're a little bit crazy too. I mean, I, I kind of equate Maryland as a better like NC state in a way, their fan base, you know, they're both a little bit delusional. Um, Maryland's a better job than NC state, but they are, they're a little bit delusional. What are you like? What are you smiling at? You're right. Yeah. I mean, you hit the nail on the head. It's yeah, they are. Um, but, I, but again, like I, I made this point earlier, when you, we're talking about how they're a top 20 job and yeah. over the course of the last, however many seasons that Turgeon was there, like they were not a top 20 team. So like, I get it. I don't, I don't blame them for being upset. I think that there's a, there's uh, a certain level of expectation that maybe you shouldn't have it, Like they shouldn't think that they're going to be Duke or North Carolina or um, maybe winning at kind of at that level, but it is what it is. Um, I mean, it, again, listen, if you're Maryland, you shouldn't have to settle for like a mid-major guy. You know, like I love Kimmy English. I love him. I've known him since he was 16 years old. But he he's coached 10 games now as a head coach at George Mason. You know, I, I just I don't know. I don't I, I don't think that's the place that you start. And I don't think that's a place you have to end up, to be honest. I, I think you can you can get a guy who's a little bit more established, who's who's less of a risk. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying it's, to get some food here. What yeah, it's it's tough to it's tough to hire a what is he thirty three years old? You know, yeah, a thirty three year old that has that has he doesn't even have a season of experience. He hasn't even played like he's never been the head coach for a conference. Oh, sorry. So, yep, that's uh, tough. That's yelled tough. at for coming in without a mask. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Look at you. Look at you. Look at you breaking all the rules. You see what I guys got? You guys see what I have to deal with with this guy now. So, um, you got anything else to add here, Goodman? Before we move on, to get out of here, did we lose you? Are you there? What are you doing? What are you doing? All right. Well, listen. Since Goodman has uh, gone completely rogue on us, I think that we're going to have to call this stream and end it. Yep. There you go. See. Later, guys.